All right, fellas, good day, and welcome to Uncensored Advice for Men. My name's Josh. I'm your host, and uh, you guys are asking questions about life, sex, money, relationships, PTSD, suicides, and all these things that are going through our our brains on a daily basis, right? Like you guys are reaching out, asking for advice, and then I go out to a community of, of people who are dedicated to love, support, and lift up you men. So on today's show, uh, we're going to have a conversation with an old friend of mine, and uh and he's on the other side of the world. I, actually, I have no clue where he is right now, but Arno, wake, welcome to the show, man. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I'm currently in Paris, France. Ah, very cool. Well, welcome, uh, welcome to the show, man. Uh, why don't you kind of give us a, a little idea about who you are and uh, where your focus is? Totally. Um, and, and again, it's a, it's a sheer pleasure to be here and, and having some time with you. The what's what's my deal? Uh, I guess I 13 years old, I had a, a spiritual awakening of sorts, which uh, put me on that journey of understanding, uh, looking for an answer for the question, who am I? Mm -hmm. And that brought me to philosophies and religions and practices and whatnot. And uh, and while I was having a professional life as well uh, in finance and technology, and then fintech, I, you know, in the Europe and the US mainly, I uh, continued helping people to reborn to themselves and slowly but surely came together a method, uh, which are, it's, it's a drawn method, it's charts, um, and that helped me to understand how this whole experience we're having works. And, uh, and also how to figure out what's my next step, right? And, uh, and, and also very importantly to lead and live through the heart. So through my heart instead of my ego, my mind, which is uh, the door to all the hells we, we go through. And, um, and so that's what came together. And about 10 years ago, I think, I came up with the realization that my life purpose now is to help 1 billion people to open their heart to themselves. So that's my focus from now on. And any activity I have goes in that direction. And about a year ago, I published a second book called I, and uh, that book, not a year ago, a few months ago, like six months ago. And uh, that book is, you know, how it's sharing the experience of I becoming itself and growing into itself. And we can get back to that later. And yeah, now I'm championing this idea that, you know, we may deserve harmony and coherence and alignment in our lives, whether it's the professional one or the personal one or both, right? And, uh, you know, abundance, growth, etc., is part of our birthright. So why not get onto that horse and really you know, uh, get into more, more simplicity of ourselves, get into the flow of ourselves and find more balance and peace and love for ourselves and the others, obviously, as well. And yeah, so now I'm offering retreats and, uh, and books and workshops around that topic to help balance the feminine and the masculine and go, you know, offer that possibility of a magical life for any person who resonate with it. Awesome, man. So you, you talk a few things that popped up as we are having this conversation, you know, lead with the heart, not the ego. You said that is the wellspring of where all evil comes from is where you said the ego is. Let's dig into that. And what yeah. have what have you discovered in that? Because it seems like any type of major catastrophe in my life, has been closely associated with an ego, whether mine or a partner's or someone, right? So kind of dig into that and, and let us hear your thoughts. Yeah, with pleasure, with pleasure. So uh, just a, a little, first a little framework. Um, for, this, for this experience of being Joshua to work, there is a need of a foundation. And that foundation is undifferentiated, eternal, infinite, infinite, unconditional love that's the frame that's the frame on top of which is who you call i joshua or i arno or i 
auditor, who made it, whomever it is. Um, and, and that I then starts to have activities and identifications, right? Identification with his own name, his own role, his own activities, or in relationship with others. And that's what we call the ego. It's that process of identification to the physical body, the emotions, the thoughts, the outer reality between quotes, okay? So that process that happens through the mind body, the emotional body and the physical body, that process of identification makes it so that we forget ourselves, all the rest of ourselves, AKA the love that is our core nature. And, and so we start to lose ourselves into these identifications and we lose feet, right? So to speak, as if you were in the ocean, uh, you, 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 you may drown yourself in it. It is possible by just being hypnotized. It's like when you're going to the movies and you're being John and John is doing whatever he's doing and you're all John. There's no Joshua anymore for that half hour and a half, right? So the same happens with people, with thoughts, with emotions, with the physical body, with any uh, patterns, belief systems that we care for, that we are a, a engaged with, right? We identify with. And so when that happens, we are at the tip of our arrow, so to speak, instead of being all that we can be. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we get lost just like a, a character that we're watching on a movie. We get lost and we become a part of that. We, we feel we get lost in that, that, and you used word like flow or, you know, um, identification. What, what do we identify with? Yes. And then you're saying what the challenge is, is that's only the tip of the spear, but to be fully, there's another key. Is that right? There's another key. It's not that there is another key. There is a key okay. to let go of this identification. So the, the whole game of this life you are in is about letting go of identification and coming back to your inner love that exists. It's always there. A bit like the love of your mother is always there, right? And likewise, you have that love inside you, but it's not. you're not paying attention to it. So because of these identifications, because you're hypnotized by all these things or events or thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. So the whole game that has been taught by many wise men in the last thousand years is to let go of these identifications and, become, and come back to a simpler uh, version of ourselves. So when you say identification, is that is that the same of letting go of your identity? Is that what you mean? It, it, it is. Yes, it will go there. Definitely it goes in that direction. But you don't letting go of identity feels scary because all of a sudden, wow, I don't have any more ego. Wow. What, what am I? <laughs> we don't want that. And it's simpler than that. It's let's imagine something. Uh, taking you as an example, because I like to pick on you, but uh, uh, so uh, you have these, um, you know, something happened in your life, uh, whether it was with a woman or et cetera. And maybe there is a, a, an underlying belief system, which is women are unreliable. Let's say that's maybe one uh, belief system that is active. And therefore you will align with women that are unreliable again and again and again and again until you have understood. In other words, until you are able to become conscious and aware of the process and letting go of that identification. And the identification was, I truly believe my truth is that women are unreliable. Hmm. Okay. Yep. So then you, you have this identification of something that you know, I had a bad experience. Women are unreliable, right? In, in this example, therefore, I just now accept women are unreliable and then I'm then attracted to, or then I create all these relationships with 
unreliable wind. Is that right? Yes, you are, you are on autopilot related to that belief system, and therefore you will always align with the same type of person so that you can confirm that your truth is true. Now, the moment you decide, I've got enough of that, and I will now consciously change my direction. I may not believe yet that women are unre uh, are reliable. <laughs> that may be a big stretch, but at the very least, that you know, women are neutral. That would be a next step. Mm -hmm. This way, I I am less identified with that belief pattern, with that belief system, and therefore I'm more open to new potentials. Okay, give us all right. So I before we go how to do that right so yeah. us guys are like okay in theory that sounds great right i can i can let go of current belief systems or current um identifications of things and that will free me to have a, a more open better life right before we go into how to do that which i would love yeah. to know because us guys are like give us the freaking map let's do this right give us another example of how that shows up in our life yeah uh easy so I was working with a CEO and uh, the patterns in his life were showing us that there was an active a, a pattern, a belief system that which was, I need to control everything. And therefore his business was not able to conclude uh, eight figure, eight and nine figure contracts, mm -hmm. basically. So when we realized that, pattern that was active so we saw it then we had one session to uh, let go of that need of control and we we have in that case identify where it was coming from so that can release the emotional uh, blockage that was there and then then after the, at the end of the session the person the, the CEO was feeling released and that that relationship with the need of control was loosened, right? Mm -hmm. It was not there in that, in that way of being anymore. The next week, he signed the first contract, nine figures. Because again, the, his creation, the company he was creating, had, we had created, was not anymore in that space of him needing to control it. It goes, it goes very, very far. And, and the, the, the heartful method, the method that I created really rewires you completely on how you believe. So until now you believe that your reality is independent of you. Well, what I'm, what I'm changing in terms of premises is that uh, reality is a function of you. So anything that you believe is enacted for your own personal purpose. If you change a belief, therefore, it will change automatically in your reality. Okay, so if I change my belief in something, right, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, as a CEO of a, of, a, uh, of a company, right, if I change my belief and my need for control, if I so start changing the... beliefs, right, yeah. then re different realities can start to, to enact themselves. Yes, exactly. Okay, this is interesting. So with the letting go, right? So it sounds like we need to let go of a few things, right? Identification, maybe some uh, faulty belief systems, maybe the need for control, which is the right? Same. right? Yes, which is the same. All right, walk us through. All you got to walk us through how to let go because I might say that I'm letting go of it, but man, my, my grip is so tight on so many <laughs> things in my life for real i've got yeah. my talent stuck in it and i'm not gonna let go like how how do we do this well that, that, it, that's where the shit hit the fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah a few uh, times i guess a few times yes no i mean how would i put it the pro the the the, the generic process is is quite simple because it's all about getting back to simplicity, always. So in other words, 
is going back to now. There is no past stories. There is no uh, uh, future expectations. It's just now. So any step I'm taking is now and now and now. That's a big aspect of letting go of identification. Okay. So uh, in other words, bringing about all the energies that are dispersed in the past and the future to this moment. And then a situation may come to you. So the very first step to find harmony or alignment, with whatever the situation is coming to you, is step number one, to accept it as it is. So in other words, not looking to react to it, because funny enough, whatever happens in this now moment is perfect, as it is. I may not agree with it, okay, but nevertheless, it is, right? Nobody can say otherwise than it is, right? Mm -hmm. So then comes the second step, which is to embrace whatever is. In other words, again, it, it has happened, it is what it is now, so I may as well accept it as it is instead of uh, saying no or, or you know, getting into some kind of an autopilot kind of reaction, emotional reaction or, or thought reaction, etc. So already we have two core steps. And then the third one, the third one is about you know, we accepted it, we embraced it. And now what if we have compassion for it? For, for, for him or her, for myself, for the, for the actual event itself? Open our heart to whatever has happened. And that would shift us totally from, uh, bring us to a new angle that would help us to release whatever was being expressed at that moment. Hmm. Right. This is the whole process. All right. So have compassion for the moment, have compassion for the event, have compassion for the other participants in it. Exactly. And for yourself. Yeah. And but for yourself. All right, shit hits the fan. Let's go through. Let's go through a scenario. Shit hits the fan. Okay. Don't want to accept it, right? The let's just say there's a loss, right? In grief, right? Like there's a there's there's a lot of emotions that come with grief: anger, yes. fear, resentment, guilt, shame, all these things. Accepting a bad situation, it's, it looks damn near impossible in my mind, right? Embracing it, right? Sounds terrible too. Then having compassion for, let's just say the loss was caused by another person who maliciously did something or did something out of neglect or did something out of evil. How in yeah. the world do you have compassion for evil? What are your thoughts on these things? At one point or another, it may arise, but let's not close ourselves off that possibility. I know it's hard. And again, I, I started with one step at a time. Yeah. So, you know, more so in these environments that you were just mentioning, we have to go back to now. Because if I'm staying in that story of that person disappeared, etc., or she may have brought me this and this and that, you understand the damage you're doing to yourself because you're putting yourself out there instead of being here now. So that was the premise. When you are in that space of now, then more so in these contexts, you may have to go back to the very simplicity of, you know, uh, pulling through one day after the other and just going through that first, through going through the emotional upheaval it may not be possible at first, but at some point, you know, you could 
again, this three-step process, at first it feels like empty and doesn't work. And at some point it starts to kick in and work. All right. So once I have been, able... yeah, go ahead. Well, fin finish your, your train of thought. Once you were able to, you know, you, you do these things, you, you start going through these steps and you said at, at some point it kicks in. So finish, finish your thought there. Yeah. Finish so your... we have to understand that life is a flow. It's it, you know, patterns are gain momentum and then they lose momentum. It's, it's cycles, it's waves. So uh, having clarity on that helps us to understand how to manage the cycles and the waves. Obviously, if you lost someone, to take that example, you are in a mighty wave of loss and grief. And at first, the only thing you can do is surf the wave the best you can and you probably don't have a surfboard anyway. <laughs> uh, and so you're drowning a little bit and then come back, et cetera, et cetera. At some point, the waves loses some of its momentum. And then I can start to pick myself up again and following something like what I, just, I mentioned so that I accelerate the process of letting go of that grief by replacing it to, with more love for the other person, for myself, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not saying, you know, uh, grief doesn't make sense, et cetera. No, of course not. But we owe to ourselves to have the patience to go, to go through whatever is needed. And also we owe to ourselves to take care of ourselves and this is the best way to do it. Replacing with love, right? So, you know, there's guys in the audience who are just going to get what you're sharing immediately, right? And then there's guys like me who, you know, maybe have gone through some, you know, different types of struggles and, and you know, we're angry, we're, we're aggressive, there's, there's violence in our life, there's violence in our heart. Right. And, you know, we're more on the, the attack side, right? Military or police or fire guys, or, you know, like there's, 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 there's other guys like us who are, who this doesn't make sense to, right? Love, you know, like we want to go destroy evil. We want to be, you know, on the destruction side, right? To just to be honest. Yeah. 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 We love you too. I love you too. Uh, but I hate evil. Right. And I want to go destroy yeah. evil. And there's, there's people, like me too, there's other guys out there. But with that comes a lot of unrest. It comes with a lot of pain. And like, when you're like, replace it with love. Yeah, for wife and kids. Absolutely. For my friends for you. Yeah, absolutely. Love, love my friends. I love my fellow dudes. I love my guys. But there's evil that there's no love in my heart or compassion in my heart. I want to destroy it. But that's probably at the same time destroying me. What the hell do I do with that, buddy? That's a great, 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 great question. There's so many ways to answer that one. Um, it, it, it all depends on what is your heart's vision. What I'm uh, looking to say here is you, you came to this planet to embody something, right? Your, your energy, let's so to speak, your music, your symphony is about whatever. Mine is about helping hearts to open. Open. Yours may be to, you know, uh, um, create peace on earth. I don't know. Uh, we don't, don't have to be that big either. It could be just in Austin, Texas, whatever. Um, so if, so what you are seeking is to embody that energy to the best of your ability. Maybe it's already conscious, maybe it's not. And part of it, most likely, I think it's gonna be fair to say, is about to protect, right? Mm -hmm. Your energy is about protecting others in this case. So uh, you, you want to align with situations 
uh, with that energy at, to the best of your abilities so that you can protect in the most efficient way. Yes? Okay. I'm, 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 I'm tracking so far. You're, you're, you're on with that. <laughs> uh, and... What would be a higher level of expression of protecting? So in other words, there, there are many ways of protecting, right? One can be to go and fight in the army. That's one option. And another one, firefighters, et cetera, et cetera. And then there may be other ways. So it's like, you know, uh, if I look at being authoritarian, there are several levels of how I can, I can be authoritarian saying, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, and you have to listen to me. Or I'm just here and people follow because, because it makes sense. These are two part of the same spectrum, right? It's the same idea, but it's not embodied in the same way. Okay. So the question to you would be, okay, how can I protect what it would be the highest expression of protecting others, because this is my this is my core, right? In the scenario we're talking about, and potentially in your life. Yeah, and that's a great question. So, if there was a a power scale, a power struggle, a fight between good and evil, right? Uh -huh. Love all. I've been told, sometimes I don't feel it, love conquers all, right? Love is more powerful than evil. So I could go attack evil and I could bring violence to evil. I could put down the bad guy or, or support those who do or, you know, be there to um, whatever. Um, but the more powerful choice is using a more powerful weapon and that's love. But how in the world do I attack something with love? So uh, let me digress a little bit. It should help us. I was in Egypt two weeks ago uh, and I was helping. I had a two weeks cruise on the Nile with 60 change makers. Cool. And the whole game was in that case to uh, bring harmony to the group. And the main issue was balancing the, fem the feminine and the masculine. Because the group, mainly not because there were more men than women, but the overall, the group language was more about let's fight the others, et cetera, et cetera, than being collaborative and work together, just to, you know, in, uh, as uh, very quickly. And therefore, they were not able to communicate together, number one. And number two, they wanted to raise six million and they were not able to do it. At the end of the two weeks, we started to, people not only were super happy working together, but they raised 60 million uh, um, in the end. And that was because th the fact of being too masculine in that energy of balancing the masculine and the feminine was creating the resistances that were expected. So by bringing up the feminine, then they, be, they came into a collaborative mode and therefore everything, all the resistances started to go away. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's my, my digression. But let's get back to what you were saying. Mm. And I'm navigating with you here because uh, I've never uh, had that conversation with law enforcement or, or, or people that are uh, defending everyone. But it is clear also that by I insisting on the fact there is evil, it fosters more example of that in my reality, in yours, right? Because we're only talking about your reality. And so the more I insist on that being there all the time, the more it has a probability of happening again and again and again. So it's not about letting go of the fact that there is no evil. It is about finding balance. 
Finding so where else. let let me help you to illustrate it a bit further where there may be evil yes or evil or people that are abusing their power position actions etc cetera, etc cetera, right mm -hmm. uh, and and has a negative consequence on someone else uh, someone that you are protecting and so that may exist indeed but is it better to focus on you uh, providing a, a place a safe haven for the people that you want to protect more than uh, uh, counting on the fact that there will be someone coming over and abuse hmm. XYZ. I don't know. To, to, uh, <laughs> that's a, it's a great question is when do I defend? When do I attack? And is, I don't know. Um, if, if we look at, you know, these, uh, these ancient Taoism, uh, Kung Fu, et cetera, et cetera, all the, the martial arts, which I know, I know you know a lot about, they, they tend to, you know, whatever the attack is coming, it's coming to them. And then they use that energy to transform it so that it, it so that the uh, blunt attack becomes more part of the flow. And then the, the energy of that attack kind of disappears within a very simple scenario in that case. Mm. So what if we would apply that kind of mechanism as well uh, in other situations? It's interesting. I, I met a guy the other day, and this guy was uh, pretty intense. And he's like, a, he's, a, he's a warrior, right? Uh, and he's like a warrior waiting for a war to happen. He was mm. like, kind of like always on, always on the, always ready to go, right? Um, but I could see a lack of peace, right? In me, I look at that in my own life and I go, when I am in that mode, because sometimes I'm in that mode and then sometimes I look back and I, and I see my, my, my three kids and I'm like, oh man, turn off that mode, Josh. Like I sometimes have a hard time turning off that mode, right? Like, you know, bump in the night goes outside and Josh is outside with a flashlight and the handgun, right? Like some, that's how my brain is wired sometimes. But yes. how do I, you know, I'm, I have to learn the, how to turn that off. And yes. one guy that I, I referred to probably doesn't have an off switch. <laughs> and I'm kind of in the middle of wanting to be able to turn it off Turn it on when I need to, to defend, but put all the energy more on the protection, the nurturing, the loving of my kids and, and my wife and my family and my business and my business relationships. How do I create that balance? Because I'm not a guy, no one has ever looked at Josh and go, that's a well-balanced guy, right? Like, <laughs> it's always like, <laughs> Josh is way over here. Boom, you know, like I'll run towards it. Um, how do I create that balance, man? I'm unbalanced. Well, first and foremost, by starting to believe that you are balanced. Okay. Uh, that may help. I mean. <laughs> All right. I believe I'm balanced. There. <laughs> so what we can say in this very moment, in this perfection of this moment, you are balanced, right? Yeah. In this moment. This is true. When you're saying I'm in balance, you're looking at all your past and you're making an average and you're deciding I'm unbalanced. This is not true either. So accepting yourself as you are is a great start. And, and we want to thank that gentleman that you met that is always on war or war on <laughs> yeah. because he gave you a contrast. Oh, I may be more balanced than I believed. Mm -hmm in the end yeah yeah so i shall continue a little bit further please yeah uh so let's start from the premise that you are indeed balanced and 
part of your balance is being at peace and having fun with your kids. And then sometimes being in defend mode or, you know, uh, uh, war, let's, let's call it war, uh, war zone <laughs> kind of yeah. thing. Uh, and it does happen to protect the people that you love, et cetera, et cetera. The question is, from where are you being that? Is it from a place of peace where you feel that the moment, from the moment that is now you, you arise and it is the best expression you can have in that moment? Or, there, or you are there because it's automatic. You are an autopilot. Yeah. This comes from, if, if you, you know, to answer that question is, where am I? Am I, am I at a place of peace in, inside, right? Acceptance of self and at peace inside? The answer is no. I'm, I'm yeah. learning to accept myself, embrace myself, both strengths and weaknesses. My identity is rooted in something that's beyond me, right? But I would say that attack mode in my head is coming from a place of fear. What's going on in the world? What's going on? You know, awesome. what I see going on, it, it, it is a place of fear. So more ammunition, more guns, more, you know, food storage, more what, right? More prepping, right? Like that's, I was raised by my, my father. I am my father, right? Like he, he was a Vietnam vet, you know, a couple bullet holes and such like that. So like, that's where the training comes from. That's where the programming is. So okay. a lot of this, I would say is coming from a place of fear and uh, uncertainty of the future. Okay, and if, again, if you go back to this now moment, in, in, even in these moments, mm -hmm. so if you are able to catch yourself in these moments, to say, okay, now, right now, in this moment, is there any reason why I would need to fear anything? The answer most likely is no. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. Because, again, instead of focusing wide, you're, for, you're narrowing your focus and you're looking at what is in this moment and that is your reality, nothing else. The rest was ghosts. Hmm. So you may be a warrior, but let's be a warrior of now. Okay. And that now moment, it, in that now moment, it may arise that you need to be uh, prepped up, etc., because there is something that happens in that moment. Yes, of course, but it's a very different place than the one of fear of or autopilot that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let, 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 let's pause this for a second, right? Because we're, we're going down this this path and you, you mentioned some steps earlier on accept, embrace compassion, right? Mm -hmm. Let, let's address the elephant in the room, right? The, the what's going on inside me and, and there's probably a lot of emotions with me and then other guys, right? Like us guys, we're, we're not really trained emotionally well, right? Like how to, how to deal with our emotions and what's going on. So, you know, we, we confront them with anger or hostility or violence or, or, or we, you know, pour some alcohol on it and try to, push it away. Um, but let's address in this situation, fear, right? Fear with what's going on in the economy, what's going on in, you know, potential wars and this and that. Let's address that for us guys. Let's address fear with the, with your three steps. How does that work? In the very same way I mentioned. So let's, so the first step you know, in order for you to be able to uh, accept, which is the first step, you need first to awake from whatever identification you were in. Uh, like, again, when you are at the movie, you're looking at John that is doing his thing on his motorbikes or whatever. You always have the opportunity to woke up, to wake up from John and say, no, I'm Joshua. And, and then from there, you start looking at the images and the colors and whatnot, whatever. So here, the same thing. You are in that place of fear. It is time for you to stare back at it 
and say, oh, where am I going with that? So that's step zero. <laughs> uh, and, and then you can launch the next step. So step zero, realizing that I'm not in my center. I'm elsewhere. I'm projected in something that may have happened a while ago and they, I fear is going to repeat itself or something that I expect that is going to happen in the future and I don't want it to happen and therefore boom, 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 I'm lost. So it's coming back to the ground and maybe you can use your body like, you know, to stomp with your feet here now. And then now, what do I do with that fear? Which is your question. Mm -hmm. So now I am more conscious, okay? A little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I choose to accept this moment. So in this case, it is not only that right now, nothing is really happening, <laughs> yeah. uh, but me and my fear, it is about accepting myself for having been in that fear. It's okay. It's part of my journey. And, you know, why not? Uh, we, we are bound to make mistakes and we're bound to do things that we did not want to, et cetera, et cetera. So let's accept ourselves for who we are. That's okay. In, in other words, let's honor ourselves for we, who we are. And then, then we embrace we embrace that whole aspect, which is a little bit what I just described, and say, okay, nothing was really happening. I was building my story and all that stuff. I lost myself there. It's okay. I can pat myself in the back a little bit. And then maybe, maybe I allow, my, I allow myself to get into the next stage, which is by ha having had a comprehension, an acceptance, and embrace myself, I may be able to feel more love for the situation, for me ha having to wonder, for me doing this and that, and also for me being able to wake up to all that and to do that, that, that process. So it's very gradual and we don't have to, and at, as we start doing it more and more and more, it starts to become easier and easier and easier. So this might be me, but I doubt it is guys in the audience, raise your hand. Yes. If you're pretty tough on yourself, right? Uh, Nobody needs to beat Josh up because Josh is, you know, pretty good at doing it on my own. Right. And I think that there's a lot of guys in the audience, in the community who go, yeah, me too. Right. So for, for me, learning to accept, embrace and have compassion for myself, it's a little easier to do it externally. Right. Um, but man, it's always, it's super difficult for me to do that internally. Yes. And I, I, I know that there's guys going, yeah, me too. Right. Um, how, how do we do that? Like, how do we have that and accept, embrace, have compassion for ourselves? You know, one of my coaches that I worked with, he, 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 we created this affirmation that says I'm the kind of guy who is kind to myself and kind to others. Right. Like, and I say that kind of like with a kind of laugh and I'm like, everything except, you know, fingers crossed everything except that kind to myself kind of thing, you know, like, ah, Josh could handle it, right? But how's that working out, right? How how has that worked out in the past? I'm learning this now, and I'm forty freaking years old, Arno. Like I'm I'm kind of just learning this stuff now. I'm late, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what are your it's thoughts? It's all man? good. We 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 have all the time we need to to learn all these things. Uh, I mean, yes, it's obviously easier to do it for other people than for ourselves. Yes, for sure. Now we can also take ourselves by the hand and, you know, with very basic steps, maybe you, you have in the fridge these, you know, accept, embrace, uh, um, love. 
And these are the three, a bit like the, you know, the 12 steps uh, of the Alcoholic Anonymous. Mm -hmm. But here we have three. And uh, it's just by repeating it, uh, you know, in action in this case, that we start to actually do it and we learn, we experience it by through the experience, we learn how to do it a little bit better and a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So now there are methods to help us awake as well, which is the, the part that is the most difficult at first, where you can every hour put your alarm on your phone to ask yourself, who am I now? Am I the fear? Am I the husband? Am I the protector? Am I just me? And that's a great way to recall, to be present. Because all that we're talking about here is just to be present in this moment. Does that answer a little bit your question? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the reason the reason the 12-step program works so good is it, it takes us through baby steps, right? Um, it, it, it says like, these are the steps to it. Guys need an action plan. We need like, we need the tactical mission. Like here's, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. We need the reminders. I got tattoos all over my body. Like, you know, that remind me of certain things. Um, so it sounds like, so go for it. Step zero. Take your phone, put an alarm every hour, and ask yourself the question, who am I? Hmm. And that will help you to feel and see and be present to the fact if you are on autopilot or not at that moment. And it will therefore help you in any other situation that is not at that time to figure out if you are an autopilot or not as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's step number one. If you are, it happened to be in the moment where you see, oh, I'm in fear now, right? Then you apply step one, two, three that we mentioned. And I think we described them rather well so far. And if you are not, great. You, you can give yourself a kudos maybe. <laughs> uh, and therefore appreciate yourself a little bit better because of that. So it's great to be hard on yourself, but it's also good for all the people that love you that you start to open the door towards yourself as well, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that won't make you a lesser man for that matter, on the contrary. It's a bit like when we're talking about being authoritarian, like hammering on people or just being there, we're only talking about having more presence of role. And by having more presence, therefore things start to become simpler and easier for everyone, including you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's not a bad direction to go after for any man. Yeah, that's an interesting I mean, I have, like I said, I have these things tattooed on my body. I have it tattooed on my arm. Who am I? I ask myself that all the freaking time. Um, cool. yeah, so I, I think that this is, so this is pretty do, cool. That if you do, awesome. Now, how many times do you remember you, you've been answering, I'm in fear, or you've been answering, I am protecting, etc. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I haven't looked at it through that lens. I've looked at it more as, you know, like for me, my belief system. You know, I, I believe enough. In, I believe in I believe in God, right? If I believe in God and that He's a mm -hmm. good heavenly Father, um, His kid, and I should be taken care of, and I could trust in Dad to take care of the situation, right? And I could bring it through that thing, and then it should get. Then why are you afraid? Because I don't trust. Because I'm lacking faith. Because it's those things. So then, who is you know? I can work my way back through the 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 thing and just accept and embrace mm -hmm. it. This is just where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And then have compassion for mm -hmm. myself. Mm -mm. I might have to call you a few times and walk me through that process, but you know, of course. It, it makes so happy. It makes it makes sense. And this, to be honest, you know, I've known you for a long time, and this 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 feels 
very foreign. This feels very woo woo. It feels this, but it also appears true, you know. And it's it's because you know it does it doesn't it doesn't really resonate well with the masculine rub dirt in it. Get up and try again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I I totally get it. Yeah, I totally get it. And it also feels foreign because it's so simple. Yeah. And we love, we love complexity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this yeah. is an invitation to get back to simplicity because really that's where the magic happens. Magic is in the simplicity. Yes. So what's the opposite of that? Complexity. So complexity is in the ego mind. Simplicity is in your heart. And the only reason why you are protecting or you are in that journey of, of uh, conquering evil is because you are loving. Yeah, I love my kids, love my wife well, love instance. my family love my country society right? and the morals etc cetera, etc cetera. yes now it may be time for you to choose more to be more in that love and therefore protect but in a very different way yeah what does that look like it's up to us to figure it out but it's a very interesting question nevertheless hmm it's interesting. It's how to, because if, you know, I, I, I know that there's energy, right? There's, there's love yes. and there's hate, there's evil, good, there's all these things. And if I believe that what the, the Bible says or what God says, love conquers all. So if through my belief system, if love is the most powerful weapon, the, the most powerful energy, the most powerful this, then I could use that as a tool. Right. Yeah. So to, uh, that was a question you were asking earlier, and I think yeah. I now I found the angle. Just let me illustrate something further. Yeah, please. When we're talking about love, so this world, all that, all your experience, all the objects that are around you, the light that is beaming on you, the thoughts that you have, the emotions that you have, the physical being that you have, is vibration. Only that. All of it. That's why at the beginning we were saying reality is a function of you because everything resonates with everything. And that's why we have alignment and all these things. We were talking about balancing the feminine and the masculine. That's the reason why it works. There's no other reason. And this is scientific. That's not woo woo. It's what it is. Okay. We just haven't caught up right <laughs> yet on that fact, but this is how it works. We can't do any, anything else about that. So, when we look at the world of emotions and we're talking about hate and uh, and rage or or sadness for that matter or positivity or love this is imagine it as a scale of frequencies of vibration frequencies so these rage and fear and all that is at the bottom of the of the vibrational frequencies the love, unconditional love, is at the very top. And then in between, you have all different type of variations. Right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you are in that fear we were talking about earlier, it's like you are at the bottom of the ladder and you have to slightly go up one step at a time to go back to a place of more acceptance, of more understanding, of of becoming more positive, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just a state of mind slash emotional where you are at the bottom of the pile. And so, and this, hap this applies to every, every being on this planet. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, in, in other words, love conquers all. Yes, it's the highest vibration possible. It is also the very core and foundation of you, as I mentioned at the very beginning. So this is where you're coming from. This is where you're heading towards, if you choose to. 
So it's kind of a circular <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, pathway. Now, it is always your choice at every single moment to go more towards the bottom of the ladder or to the, uh, to the highest aspect of the ladder. And so, again, now that I think of it further, you may still protect from a place of love than from a place of fear. Mm. What does it look like in your life? What would it be? That's a freaking interesting question. <laughs> it sure is. What does it... There's a, there's a very big difference between protecting and attacking. There is also that. Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, I want to know more about you and I want to know more about, you know, some of the, the, the things that you're working on for you in this, in your phases and your, in your coaching and your, your, your mission to help a, a billion people open up their heart towards love. Like what, what is the, what are you finding is the biggest resistance to that? And how do we see that in the world? Hmm. Uh, it, the biggest resistance is our capacity to identify. We're so mesmerized by the beautiful stories we're thinking that are true, that we have completely forgotten ourselves in that process. And we're all going through slumber <laughs> uh, and believing that, you know, the chaotic life is what can be normal, what should be normal, when it is not alignment and harmony is the normality. It is how we are born and how we can have our life. Now, obviously, to a, an audience that is more into protecting and attacking, etc., it feels very, 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 very far away. I understand that. Uh, but nevertheless, this is my experience today. And thank you guys to do what you're doing because that allows my experience to be had, right? And helping people to open their heart to themselves. Mm. Um, now, I believe we hold all of us, even if we all have a different symphony, a different music, right? So yours is about protecting, another is gonna be about accounting, and another is gonna be about, I don't know. Mine is about helping people to open their heart because in the end, that's the most beautiful gift I can make to myself. And, uh, and we all together weave an amazing, huge symphony that is we call life. With all our imbalances and balances. Mm. That's what we call the flow of life as well, right? And it's freaking magical. If we allow it, if we accept to receive it as such. You, you were talking about your faith. It is part, faith is part of it as well. Because if not, you know, why doing what we're doing? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, you know, that all the different aspects of your life are moved with that faith because if there is no hope at some point, right? <laughs> why continue in doing what you're doing? Yeah. And this is amazing of you, also that. Now, I, I guess my invitation is for all of us to figure out what would be a higher vibration or higher level of expression of ourselves in whatever is our energy, our story, to do it from a, a different place. What would that look like? Let's try it out. And please report us back. I mean, I'd love to learn and, and, and from you guys as well. 
because I think it is important that we all uh, we all grow together. Yeah, Arno, this is uh, man. I love our conversations because it challenges me to look at life and myself through a different lens that's not typically uh, trained in me. That's not natural for me. And I know that there's guys going, yeah, me too, right? Um, so I love I love the, the the challenge and the reminder of why am I doing this? Why, you know, why do I want to attack or break down evil or something? It's because I have a deep love for my fill in the blank, my wife, my kids. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. Totally. That's where I should be putting my energy. Totally. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Now that if, if, oh man, so, so many golden nuggets for me, that was the gem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. Arno, <laughs> um, for this interview, we're, we're, we're wrapping up on, on time, uh, for guys in the audience who need, you know, who want to connect with you and, and who go, you know what, this does resonate with me and I need to create more balance in my, in my world. I need to figure out this, this, the flow of life and I need to, have a chat with you, where could guys go to connect with you and um, learn right. with you? So first they, they could go, I, I'm sharing a uh, eight hours workshop. I mean, in f several segments, uh, which is to help people to find harmony and it's free. So they can go through it if they want to. It's tapwad.com slash harmony. Uh, we'll, we'll share, I'm sure you'll share the, the link on the uh, underneath. But with just with that already, I hope, it's my sincere hope that they will be able to start making a difference for themselves. That's, that's my purpose. And then after that, if they want to, there are retreats, et cetera. But, you know, first and foremost, more so for all the amazing work that you guys are doing, um, you know, have a look, try it out and test things, play with it, play with yourself, find ways to to you know, even let me know if I'm wrong. It's unlikely, but I'm happy to have that conversation anyway, uh, because that's the way we can figure out the best way to communicate and to make sure that the message gets across um, to help you. And, and uh, we haven't spoken about the feminine and the masculine, and there are a few things around that that would be amazing to share there. Uh, but we'll get to that in another uh, session, probably. The let's try it, and let's make a difference for ourselves, and therefore the others that we care and love. Cool. Well, Bud, I love you, man. I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing love your heart you. and your and your mission. Uh, dudes in the audience, as always, reach out to our guests. Their contact information will be in the show notes below. So connect with them directly and say, hey, what you're sharing, I need some help with. Raise your hand, ask for help. And uh, our guests have all, all said yes, right? So you just have to reach out. Um, if you guys are working on something or need some help with something, uh, you can always head on over to Uncensored Advice for Men. Uh, dot com fill out a quick form and and i'll plug in with someone who can uh help or maybe you have some advice to give guys and uh, you know maybe get you on the show so that's a good place to start i love you guys see you all on the next episode cheers thank you bye <laughs>